Hey everyone and welcome back to some more XCOM 2. So, when we last left off we just finished the first floor of the Hunter Stronghold and now we'll be doing the second floor. It's time to deal with the Hunter. We got some nice usable high ground. So, the Hunter is weak to close range attacks and skirmishers. Which is why we have a skirmisher in here. And a Templar. He is not immune to melee attacks, so melee attacks will do quite nicely. Alright then. So let's maybe be careful because there is going to be one group in here. There always is. We'll move into cover, which might or might not trigger them. Yep. So what is it? A Spectre and a Viper. Yep, that's not a problem. We'll deal with that. Maybe Viper first. Let's check our chance to hit first. 62, 59, we can get low targeting up. Where's Nick? I think he already moved. Yep, right here. No one needs to use rapid targeting, we'll just use regular holo target on the viper then we can take a shot at the viper i assume the spectre will use shadow bound because that's what they usually do not always however his actual weapon doesn't do a whole lot of damage and that's one dead viper and a little bit of loot so now we can try to do some damage to the Spectre. There's not much point suppressing him because that won't do a whole lot. Let's see. Dominique. What's over, there? over here will do. Can't get low targeting on the Spectre, so let's just take a few shots. Yep, nice one. We might be able to kill it. We can actually kill it. Well, I don't want to move too close just yet. This will likely miss, but let's try anyway. Yep, it will miss. Rig, 40%. Nope. Unfortunately. Okay then. Well, we can grapple up, which will improve our chance to hit, and then we can take two shots. Let's maybe do that then. 68%, and then we'll have zero in. 78. Nice one. And now we can kill it with Brad, I guess. Sure, let's just do that. It's fine. Bye bye. We still got that loot we should probably pick up. Alright, let's back up slightly. And we can grab the loot. Yeah, let's just grab the loot right away. Sounds good to me. Alarium core and tech fragments. I'll take that, thanks. It's heavier than it looks. So let's set up on the high ground. On my way. Not sure just how reliable this is going to be. I suppose we'll find out soon enough. I'm trusting you here. Oh yeah, lobster needs a reload, obviously. I am reloading. Let's just reload everything. Especially the shotgun, since that's a single reload. No need to move in just yet. We'll go better prepared. Alright, now we can move. So let's spread out a little bit. Because we don't want half of our squad to get dazed all at the same time. That would be bad. I don't think I'll be keeping everyone on the high ground. There's not enough space for everyone up there. Not really. If you say so. Okay, I guess we're still not close enough. Fine. Into full cover you go. And Nick. Nick should probably be on the high ground. That's not quite what I wanted. But alright. Are we still not close enough, really? 
Okay, fine, no problem. Brad, get in here. Surely that's going to trigger it. Yup. So here comes the hunter. You're not supposed to be here. You were never meant to figure out our little trick. Full of surprises, aren't you? Yes, so yes, I am. Full of holes. We'll see about that. So like I said, he's weak to skirmishers and also takes increased damage from close range attacks. Which doesn't mean just melee anything within a few tiles. He can summon advent troopers, he can reveal concealed units, he will teleport after taking damage, that's probably the most annoying part. He has a chance to return fire against missed shots, this is also quite annoying because his rifle does a lot of damage. And he gains health when nearby enemies take damage. So we'll see about that. He has some annoying strengths, but we can take advantage of his weaknesses quite easily. Okay, so first thing we need to do is shred him. Obviously. How are we going to do that? We can throw a grenade. That's a possibility. Where do we stand? Now, cover doesn't matter too much because he will teleport anyway. So I'm thinking maybe right here. We can use rapid targeting and then throw a grenade perhaps. Something like that. I will definitely use rapid targeting. So like this. And then we can throw a grenade to shred him. I'm not using Hell of Bullets yet. We have to use up the grenades anyway. And we need to shred him. So that will do. One armor is much more manageable. Now he will teleport. Hopefully not too far away from us. Yeah, that's not too bad. I can deal with that. Only partial cover over there. Okay, we got a 73% chance. Now remember, he will return fire if or when we miss. And he can do a lot of damage. But I guess we'll just deal with that. 73% is pretty decent. It won't get much higher than that. This needs to hit because he takes increased damage from skirmishers. Nice one! And we got a crit. Alright then. So now we'll get another shot. Uh, he teleported away. Where is he? Over here. Okay. We can use our second action for combat presence. And we could take a shot with Rick from the high ground. That sounds reasonable. This should be around 80% chance to hit. No, it's 100. Right. Yeah, that's quite a lot of bonuses. What about the dual strike? How's your bondmate again? Lobsterman. Where's Lobsterman? And does he have line of sight? Yes, he does. 87%. You know what? I think we're going to use dual strike. Sure, let's do that. Don't disappoint me. Nice one. 11 critical. And here comes Lobsterman. There we go. Nice one. Before Planeswalker kicked in. That was really good damage right there. We will teleport again, down to 25 health. And now we could still use combat protocol, for example. We can also reload and take a regular shot. We can certainly do that. 81% through full cover. Problem is, if we miss, he will almost certainly hit us because we don't have cover from this direction. Probably better if we take a shot with Reconer. 70%. We could also use run and gun. No, that won't achieve much. We can't flank him. Okay. Well, let's check our other options. We can slash him. That will do really good damage and is granted hit. Yep, that's our best option. The only problem is that we are moving away from the sarcophagus. 
but I suppose that's fine. We will move into cover. So that will be pretty good damage. 14, and he's burning. We need one more attack. Maybe two more attacks. He is almost dead. Okay. So... Hail of bullets! Yeah, I don't want to risk a miss, not really. So I'm thinking Hail of Bullets is the best option here. Okay, Hail of Bullets. That won't quite kill him, but he will be almost dead. We could maybe finish him off with Combat Protocol. Or we could let him take a turn and then finish him off on the next turn. It's slightly risky, but that will allow us to do more damage to the Sarcophagus. But again, that's risky. Because he will attack somebody. He could daze the Benik, for example. I think we're better off just killing him right now. And then we can attack the Sarcophagus. That's just safer. Yes, we won't do as much damage to the Sarcophagus as a result. But... I'd rather just kill him right now. I don't know. I see downsides to both approaches. We will miss out on quite a lot of damage on the sarcophagus right now. It's a tough call. The problem is that he has quite a few really easy targets, like Rick for example, and Rick only has 12 health. Ninety-nine percent. We can also use Brad. That's probably better, since Brad cannot melee the sarcophagus. All right, let's just kill him with Brad. It's fine. Yes, we are not in the optimal positions, but I'm okay with this. So that's round one. We'll probably have to kill him two more times, almost certainly. Device appears to be some sort 80 of health on the sarcophagus. Transferring tremendous amounts of yes, yes, I'm well aware of that, Tygon. But thanks. No wonder these things don't die. So, right, let's move a little bit closer to that thing. I don't think we can do any more damage to it on this turn. I could use run and gun. I'm not totally convinced that's really worth it. But whatever, let's use run and gun. It might make a difference in the end. It's almost 10% damage. So now we'll get some enemies. Spectre Prime, seriously? Yeah, that's... really annoying. That's actually really bad news right now. Because if I shoot the Spectre Prime, he might use Shadow Bound instantly. I think it might be best to ignore him, actually. And the Codex. Right, the Codex is not a big deal. It's mostly the Spectre Prime. Now, we do have Blue Screen, and the Blue Screen works on Spectre Prime. It's going to be annoying to deal with, I can tell you as much. Well, alright. Let's do some more damage to the Sarcophagus, because that's what we need to do. And that's what we'll do. I don't think I want to move away from here. No, not really. We can use Holo Target because that will not end our turn. Let's Holo Target the Spectre Prime. Nick has independent tracking, which means the Spectre Prime will remain Holo Targeted for one additional turn. And then we can shoot the Sarcophagus. Okay. Ruben. Yeah, move towards the sarcophagus and then take a shot. Something like this. We should also try to spread out, because of the codex. So, how's that? That's 56, okay. I'm kind of tempted to shoot that Spectre Prime with the Bolt Caster. But I don't know, I feel like we should really focus on the sarcophagus right now. Yeah, we seriously should. 
We also got Dominic. Well, Dominic could slash him, but again, I'm a little bit worried he will just use Shadow Bound on somebody. And then we will be in trouble. I would really prefer to avoid that if possible. If we're going to hit him on this turn, we should do it now. Because we still have a chance to kill him. After he gets an additional action. So you know what, let's hit him with Dominique. We got 47% chance to crit. We could also use run and gun and use the shotgun instead. The shotgun will have a higher chance to crit. Because we got superior laser sight. So this will potentially do more damage than a melee attack. Let's do that then. Hopefully we'll get a nice crit here. So 102% chance to crit. So it's a granted crit. I will not use the axe because that will give him an action for not a whole lot of damage. Nice one. 12 critical. Let's see what he's going to do now. And blade storm. Perfect. Okay, so he will probably use shadow bound. Oh, he vanished. And we do not know where he is. Well then, that's not quite the outcome that I expected. I'll be honest with you. Also, Rick is too far away to do anything. He can shoot the codex, but he will have to stand in the open in order to do so. Like over here. And uh, no. He can go here. Okay. What's his chance to hit? Probably not brilliant. Oh, there we go. We revealed the Spectre Prime. How did Dominic not see him? He's standing literally right next to her. That's kind of funny. So next up we will use Brad on the Spectre Prime. I think. Maybe? Yeah, I think we should just kill the Prime. Because he's trouble. We have the upper hand right now. If he tries to move again, we will get Bladestorm again. Nice one. So, Bladestorm. That might even kill him. Come on. Kill him. Oh, no Bladestorm. Alright, fair enough. It's down to 4 health. 4 health. Okay. We do have teamwork. We can use teamwork. Uh, no, hold on. R Lobsterman still has actions. I'm thinking combat protocol. That will kill the prime instantly. And it will be granted. Can anyone else get a granted kill? I suppose so, yeah. Alright, let's finish it off. I don't want to worry about it. Here. Now we can hit the thing. The sarcophagus. We can still do it with our skirmisher as well. That's perfect. I will ignore the codex right now. He will use the Psy Bomb, which doesn't matter too much. Now, since Rick cannot hit the sarcophagus, we could maybe use advanced teamwork. No, that doesn't make any sense. No, not really. It does not. Just hit it with our primary weapon. That's 12 damage. Okay, it's down to 37. And that leaves us with Rick. There's not much point using suppressive fire on that codex. Not a whole lot of point using Overwatch either, but we might as well use Overwatch? We can use Entrange, actually. Here. So, here comes the Hunter again. We have to kill him two more times. We will definitely get to the Sarcophagus the next time we kill him. And we will probably have to deal with the Codex. We could try to ignore the Codex. But that might get a little bit annoying. Well, we'll see. So, how do we start? We have to shred him again. So... This might be a good moment to use Rage Strike. Because that will shred him. And that's all I want right now. To shred him. I think that's our best move right now. What about the axe? No, let's save it. Okay, Raid Strike. 
and he will teleport after that, hopefully into a better position from our point of view. Down to one armor now. We still have the rocket launchers. We have like three rockets. I might use one right now, actually. 68%. Yeah, remember, he will get a shot if we miss him. It's easy to forget that, so I'm also reminding myself. This would be a good moment to hit him with the rocket launcher. Can we hit him from our current position? Might be a little bit hard. No. Somebody else will have to do it from the looks of it. Okay. Who can do that? Ruben. He also has Salvo. Okay, Ruben can definitely do it, so let's just do it. That will also shred his one remaining armor. It's not a lot of damage, but whatever. It will force him to teleport. And he can't really teleport away from us. Here, yep, that's much better. Okay. So, Rick. Lobster man. Now, I could just stay where I am. Reload and take a shot. It's an option. And then we can give ourselves advanced teamwork. I'm leaning towards doing exactly that. 90%. It's unlikely we'll miss this one. It's too good to ignore. Okay, let's go for it. Nice one, 12 damage. Now he will teleport again. We could also just take damage from that sounding bomb. It doesn't do that much damage. Uh, where did he go? Somewhere around here? Oh, right, over there. Okay. Let's see. 68% with the axe. We do have full cover against him now, so that axe might not be a bad idea. I could also hit him with a rocket launcher, but I think I'd rather save it right now. Let's try the axe. If we miss, his chance to hit Dominic won't be that high. Yeah, we missed. Okay. Well, I took that into account. He still hit us, unfortunately. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, Soul Stealer. That's a pretty annoying ability, I'm not gonna lie. We can hit him in melee. Okay, well, that's a possibility. You know what? Yeah, let's hit him in melee. Go, go, go. That is still a lot of health. That was a very annoying heal right there. But we got 13 damage. And now he's also on fire. Yep, he's quite far away again. This might be a good moment to maybe use another rocket launcher. We can still do it with Ruben. I think we're going to do exactly that. We need to force him to teleport. He's at 26. We might still be able to kill him on this turn. That's my goal here, in case that wasn't obvious enough. We still got Brad. He can do some pretty good damage. And guaranteed. Does anyone else have a good shot? Right now. Yes, Rick. But he will be very far away from the sarcophagus. I don't like that too much. Yeah, let's use Brad here. That seems reasonable. That will be good damage. Come on, Brad. Do your thing. There we go. 16. He's down to 10 health. We only need one more hit. Where did he go? Oh, great. We can't actually see him. Uh, no, we can. He's over there. We can finish him off. Although, Nick will not do guaranteed 10 damage. I don't think anyone here can do guaranteed 10 damage. Uh, actually, that's not correct. Meso can do guaranteed 10 damage. Sort of. Well, the problem is that I cannot use Slash. 
but I can take a shot. Remember that the Hunter takes increased damage from skirmishers. He also takes increased damage from close range. And if I move up here, then I will not have 100% chance to hit him. That's a bit of a problem. I think Nick will do enough, actually. I'm pretty sure he will from this close. Because he will do extra. Yeah, okay, he's dead. Unless we miss. Which we got 6% chance to. Nope, he's dead. Now we can finish off the sarcophagus. I will just ignore the codex for now. The codex is mostly an annoyance. Nothing more than that. We need to do 37 more damage to the sarcophagus. So that should be easy enough. We will get some more enemies on the next turn. Hopefully not another prime. I would prefer to avoid that if possible. So Brad. Yeah, we should probably move him more to the middle. Sounds good to me. Then we got Rick, Mesa, and that's that. It's not going to be a whole lot of damage. Oh yeah, we got blue screen rounds on Nick, so we could actually kill that Codex. Sure, you know what, let's do that. Blue screen rounds on the Codex are perfect. So, like this. That's 84%. Seriously, you missed. What the heck, bro? Damn it. Well, now I'm mad that I didn't take a shot at the sarcophagus. But I didn't plan to miss with 80... something percent. Oh well, whatever. We'll kill it on the next turn. 7 damage from that, it's fine. Now, don't give me primes, thanks. That's a Codex Prime. I can deal with a Codex Prime. 26 health on it. We do have blue screen. And... what else? Archon Prime, seriously now? What the heck? Now that's just annoying. I'm actually kind of considering just using the Mimic Beacon or something. I don't know. Let them finish their thing first. So we need 24 more damage and we have to do it on this turn. So... Well then... That will be interesting. Let's take that shot first. Now we need 17 more. And we should probably move. Well, Lobsterman definitely needs to move. And perhaps heal himself? He's down to 8 health. Which is not brilliant. What about Brad? What will Brad do? Oh, also, the Minik is down to, what, 5 health? That is not great. That is not great at all. I think we should heal her with Lobsterman. Where exactly is Lobsterman again? Right here on top. So we can move Dominic towards the sarcophagus. Take a shot and then heal her with Lobsterman. That sounds like a good plan to me. But where do we go exactly? How about where Rick is right now? That looks pretty good. Yes, we can do that. But first, we need to move Rick out of the way. How the heck do we do this? Do we take a shot at the Codex Prime? It's down to 13 health. So there's a good chance we'll kill it. But again, we need to hit. Okay, Rick. I hope you got your misses out of the way already. 90%. Seriously, if you miss this one, I swear I'm going to demolish you. I'll find a way. What the heck, man? God damn it. Well, that just sucks big time. What a wasted shot that was. I can still use combat presence, I suppose. But man, that was a wasted shot right there. And before he misses again. Don't you dare miss yet again. 
There we go. But you shouldn't have missed the first time around, I'm just saying. Now we can move Dominic. So... Let's see. Hold on, let's not mess this up. Let's get Lobsterman in here first. Then Dominic. And now we can use the free reload. Just like that. And take a shot. At the sarcophagus. There we go, 10 damage. We need 7 more damage. Right, we got her trigger. Perfect. So, one more shot. Yep, that will be enough. There we go. Very nice. Well done. I'm hoping that's a good thing. Yes, the regeneration process has been interrupted. Reading now heal up. It has Eight health, unstable. five health. That chosen with everything we've got. Calm down, Bradford. We need to not die first. So now we will definitely need the mimic beacon. Let's see. Yes. Hold on, though. Yeah, I guess we should move more towards the center. Uh, I guess that'll be okay. We will have rapid targeting up on the next turn. Do we have to use the Mimic Beacon? Yeah, we really should. Absolutely. Let's get it up here, maybe. Not that it matters too much. Up here is good. Come on, here. Okay, we have that will do. Wait, seriously? Don't tell me that didn't work. No, it worked. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Now, we're not done yet, but I will not be hitting the Prime. Definitely not. Let's see. I would prefer to stay on the high ground. So let's stay on the high ground. And I think just hunker down. Position. Then we got Brad. I could hit the Codex. Not convinced it's really worth it. We don't have a follow-up, so... Well, we kind of do, because we could use Reaper. I suppose that's an option. Wait, no. Because this won't be a kill. I think we'll just move him somewhere and that's it. Yep. Let's keep him roughly in the middle. And that's that. Oh great, he took 4 damage from that explosion. Yeah, it doesn't matter, he's a tank, literally. Here comes the Hunter, with less health this time around. We still have one more rocket. But we have to use it strategically. Wait, seriously? You're supposed to target the Mimic Beacon, not me? That's just rude. At least the Codex will do it, but that was annoying. That was very annoying. That could have ended poorly. And Codex Prime, because why not? Empowered Sonic Bomb. Well, that apparently does a thing. Weapon unaffected. <laughs> and Archon Prime again. Yep. So there goes the beacon. Let's see if we can kill the Hunter in one turn. 7 HP stolen. He's up to 52 now. Well, so let's see. We do have the Acid Bomb. That will be the best move for Ruben. We will ignore all the Primes. Because there's just no point attacking them. I don't think so. Okay, let's throw the Acid Bomb. This will make him teleport and it will also shred all of his armor. Which is exactly what we want. And Ruben doesn't really have any other options because the Sonic Bomb removed his ammunition. So there it is. Now he will teleport. That's not too bad, I can deal with that. So there's the rocket on Rig. I think that's the last one we got. Pretty sure it is. 
Now, how do we do this? Oh no, Dominique also has a rocket. Right, and she does not have running gun. But we got teamwork. I need to think about this. We also got Brad, obviously. I'm thinking Brad. We need him to teleport more to this side of the room. Okay, yeah, Brad. That's 10 damage. We need 51 more damage. I'm not sure if we can do that much on this turn. Maybe, maybe not. Oh yeah, 15 damage because the weakness. It doesn't show up unless we initiate the attack from close range. Okay, so... Parry. We need 36 more. I don't think this will be close enough to take advantage of the weakness. I'm not sure what the radius on it is. It might be close enough? Well, I guess I can check by moving towards him. Okay, Let's okay. check. We always have other options. It will work. 88% and 46% chance to grid. Mm, yeah, point blank is a little bit too low. Okay, let's go for it. Did our chance to crit just change? No, it didn't. We need this to not miss. That's important. Don't disappoint me, Rick. You hear me? Was his botmate again? That would be... Oh yeah, Lobsterman, right. Come on, Rick. Nice one! 19 critical damage. I'm pretty sure we got him. I mean, not yet. He still has 17 health. Oh, great. That's a bit far away. This would be a perfect moment to use the rocket launcher. Yep. Do we have any other options? We do, but I think I'd rather go for the rocket launcher option. Can we actually use it properly, though? Maybe... From over here? That should be fine. I think that will be fine. I'm about 99% sure. Sorry about that. Uh, no, that is not fine. Oh great, this is tall enough to block the rocket. I was convinced that will, will be fine. But apparently it is not fine. That is not so good. Well then, that's a bit of a problem, because that was my plan, basically. We do have teamwork. Oh yeah, you know what we're going to do? We are going to use teamwork for Brad. And now the hunter is basically screwed. He's pretty much as good as dead. He might not die from this attack, but he will be down to one or two health. Yep, one health. Just don't miss that last attack. No, that is not all I got. Where did he go? Right there. Okay, so let's just use something that will be a guaranteed hit. Okay, 73%. Well, hold on. We can give the Dominique an extra action. And then she can throw a grenade. That sounds like a pretty good idea to me. We can also use rapid targeting. Let's use rapid targeting just in case. It's probably completely unnecessary. But I'll use it anyway. Okay. So... How about combat protocol? I don't think we can do it from here. No, we can. So he's basically dead now. Yeah, he's dead. Command protocol and that's that. Goodbye, Hunter. There we go. We won't have to deal with that annoying bastard anymore. The plane walker ability is quite annoying. But it's way more annoying on the assassin than on the hunter. Didn't see this one coming. So this 
is what it feels like to be afraid, not by style. Well, that's that. Operation Moon Prince completed. Any promotions? Yep, two promotions. For Ruben, we got Hollow Targeting, Breaching Ground, and Zero In. These are all nice. I do like both Breaching Ground and Hollow Targeting. I might take Breaching Ground. We can always consider taking Hollow Targeting with our shared points. But let's take Breaching Ground. Like that. And then Reconner. Wiley and Whiplash. Yeah, I do like Whiplash, let's get that. And there's also Serial. That would cost us 25. It might be worth considering. I'll think about it. So, Dark Lance and Dark Claw. We should research that right away. What are we researching right now? Plasma Rifle, right. Work is well, uh, Eight days left on that. Was that boosted? Or was it not boosted? Eight days for Hunter yeah, weapons. You know what? Let the Plasma Rifle finish. Because that upgrade is just as important. So that's fine. Okay. Alloys. We still got Alloys and Delirium. What else do we have around here? Expires in 9 days. Intel. Let's pick up Alloys and Delirium. I don't think we'll actually need that. All that much. Honestly. But we can grab it anyway. We can always sell it. Once the black market opens up again. 16 days. Okay, let's just grab it. We still need quite a few upgrades, actually. At least we won't have to worry about it anymore. Advent Retaliation. Well, that was quick. Muton Prime. That's a short list. Suspiciously short. Interesting. I think there's a surprise waiting for us in there. Because that list is really suspiciously short. Well, in any case, that's going to be the end of this episode. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.